Well, originally it was a, a, diff a different decision for me. Uh, I originally applied for the Air Force and uh, wasn't accepted in that. Um, living in this area, I really wanted to do something that was of value. I worked as a clerk for a while in an office and realised that that wasn't me to sort of, as a career, to sit behind a desk for my life. So I looked for things that had outside opportunities. And um, the AFP actually, you know, afforded me that opportunity to be able to work outdoors and do other things as well. Living in Queanbeyan and at the time um, was very obviously closely associated to um, the Australian Capital Territory and the home of the AFP. Uh, there were um, recruitment campaigns and things that were happening at the time. It was actually a time where they were actually really focused on the recruitment of women. Uh, the, pro, the course following mine actually still has the highest percentage of women that was recruited in the AFP. So that was actually, the course commenced back in 1982. So it was actually quite significant time for the AFP as far as recruitment of women and the opportunities that were out there. For women to actually gain really good, secure government jobs was also very attractive for us back then. I was 18 when I joined the AFP. I had worked for a year out of school. I actually was sort of slightly young for the, my year at school even, but I had worked for a year before joining um, the Australian Federal Police. My family's history, my father served 35 years with the New South Wales Police Service. He was actually stationed in Queanbeyan at the time when myself and both my two sisters joined the Australian Federal Police at different intervals over about five years. I was the second one to join. Uh, I joined directly into the ACT, originally to community policing before deploying to Darwin. But it was really having worked in the country areas. Dad always was, hated the city, was um, very much focused on country policing. And we'd grown up with that, that we actually made like Canberra an attraction and joining the AFP an attraction. And I think he also encouraged us, but saw the promotion of the recruitment of women that the AFP had at the time, that he actually encouraged us to join the AFP rather than New South Wales Police. Both of those, my two sisters, have now retired. Um, they, one older, one younger. Um, both all did more than um, 30 years in the AFP uh, in different areas. We've all sort of worked in different areas. Uh, whilst we're, sometimes we've worked in the same location, we've always sort of worked in different teams and specialised in different things. But it's, it's really been a, quite a journey for the family. Um, my husband, my son are also um, professional staff members with the AFP and some other relatives as well. So it's, it has been quite um, a career, you know, for our family and something that sort of really, we all have um, benefited from the, you know, the camaraderie and that that was in this. It's not just about our family, it's about the broader organisation itself and what it offered to us. For the last 11 years, I've been working with the AFP's international portfolio. That has been a hugely significant period for my career and actually progressing the women, peace and security agenda and probably where it actually became to light for me, um, working with women in partner policing organisations. Originally, I became interested in this sphere because of the Pacific Island Chiefs of Police Women's Advisory Network. Being part of that and working with um, some of those people and, and counterparts in other women's networks was what gave me the interest in this. And then I was actually sort of asked to come and join the Pacific Police Development Program as in a, well, in a gender role at the time to try and, ha so they actually had a sworn female in the role. In that role over the years, I've worked in a number of areas in delivery of women's leadership training, part of the women's network supporting and mentoring our counterparts, but also as a counterpart with our New Zealand police colleagues in the prevention of domestic violence program that they ran for 10 years. Whilst we worked with them for a couple of years on that program, it enabled us to go out into many Pacific countries and actually support the progress and improving police response to domestic violence in those regions. Those things I think have been highly significant um, in gaining my interest in the women, peace and security agenda to the point that I now perform the role of the gender advisor for international operations. 
and have been involved in developing the gender strategy, the current gender strategy for international operations that we work to. Having been with the organisation for almost 38 years now, when I joined, women um, were still wearing skirts, we were not wearing trousers and things like that. But the other one is when you're trying to balance the family responsibilities, you were very much um, put into more administrative roles and, and to actually try and get the flexibility that you needed to actually raise a family and continue in a policing career. It was very hard back then to actually maintain contemporary operational skills which sort of impacts your career going forward in the long term to try and regain those skills is very difficult, particularly after doing it for a significant period of time. Over the years there's been different opportunities, but one of the real challenges was trying to raise a family and have a career in policing and maintain your operational policing skills. It was really hard to actually maintain operational policing roles while raising a family. And most people like myself were actually um, siloed or sidelined into um, administrative roles or administrative support roles, um, even now what we would probably call operational support roles, while they were raising their family. And if you actually did that over a significant period of time, it was very difficult to regain the skills. There weren't opportunities to retrain and bring those skills up to more contemporary knowledge. So it's presented a lot of challenges to actually do that, which is one of the reasons that I actually grasped the opportunity to actually work in the international operations portfolio and support our partner policing agencies, work through some of the similar challenges that we had encountered over the years since I joined. When I joined, we wore lovely blue two-piece uniforms that were so impractical. It was a skirt. Women were not allowed to wear trousers. We wore court shoes and stockings, carried a handbag that carried our gun, our handcuffs and a button, and heaven help you if you ever needed to use it. Um, we always joked that it was um, better throwing the handbag at someone than actually trying to get something out of it to actually use any of our accoutrements. Uh, and it was still quite a while before that changed. And we moved then to think, to uniform that actually was collots. So it still represented that we still needed to, um, had a long way to go. Now we have much better improvement in our uniforms as far as practicality and equity in what we have that actually meets the operational needs. I think our policies have changed significantly even maternity policies, flexible workplace arrangement policies, and all those things have come, we have come so far in where we, we've got to with that. I think there still probably is a way to go in some things, you know, I would still love to see more women in leadership roles in our organisation. I'd have to be ambitious to say lovely, it would be wonderful to see a female commissioner for the AFP at some point, but probably not in my time with the AFP, but I think you know, it's, there's still progress to be made, but we have come a long way. I always recognise the women that have come before us, the ones that still paved the way for us to have some of those opportunities. I became involved in the women's network in the AFP probably 10 or 15 years into my career was when I recognised actually what they had done for us and in leading that way. And it's one of the reasons that I still stay involved in that now is to try and assist and support and still continue to improve the conditions for women in the AFP and the opportunities. The first thing I would say to them is have a plan. Make a plan that balances your work and your personal life and your study and anything else that you actually envisage you want to do in one year, two year, five year, even ten year blocks. I think it's something that I didn't have that I think it really sort of will help shape your career in the, into the future as to where you want to be. But probably uh, the key words I would say is be courageous, be inspired by others, be true to yourself, find your own style and make your own story.